Hey guys, I pray you're blessed today. I just wanted to come on here and talk to you all for a couple of minutes and just um, share my thoughts with you. You know, right now there's a whole lot of battles going on and I can honestly say that I it has been really rough this week. It just seems like it's one battle after the next. Attacks from the the YouTube channel, attacks from family members, attacks from friends. And it's just been overwhelming. And at the same time, I have to remember that I, the servant, am not greater than my master. You, who are a servant, are not greater than your master, our master. And so we have to remember that Jesus was persecuted. So we're going to be persecuted. He was attacked. He was ridiculed. He was called all manner of names. He was even called Beelzebub. I mean, he was he was ridiculed and hated and they wanted to kill Jesus. So we have to remember that we are not greater than our master and that attacks are going to come and we have to remember to fight them in a godly way and it's not our fight to begin with. We have to allow the Lord to work through us, the Holy Spirit to work through us and allow him to use us in a way to diffuse the arguments. And sometimes we have to remember there's times to be quiet and there's times to stand still, but there's also times when you need to speak, but you need to make sure what you say is from God and it's not just you acting out in anger or acting out in frustration because you're being attacked. And, you know, we have to remember that our war is not with people. Our war is not with flesh and blood. And so I wanted to read 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 to you real quick. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so we have to remember, guys, that... Yes, people might come up against us, but we have to remember that there are, there are things that are going on in the unseen realm, the spiritual realm, that we cannot see that are influencing these people. The enemy is hot and heavy after God's people right now, and the attacks have been relentless. And it's, there's no breaks. There's no breathing room. It's just bam, bam, bam. I was so overwhelmed yesterday because of just the attacks, just nonstop attacks. And... I just, I, I just thought, God, I don't know what to do. So I had to pray. I had to ignore some of them. I had to address some of them in love. But at the same time, we have to remember who we are. And what people think about us, it doesn't matter. You know, and we're, we're not going to win battles physically. We're not going to win battles with our wealth and with our, our prestige and with our 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 physical means of warfare, our warfare is done spiritually. And we are strong and mighty people, not within ourselves, but with because our Lord is Jesus Christ. And we are strong because of him. When we are weak, he is strong. And we have to ask him for guidance to help us to know how to navigate when situations come up in our life. And remember that even if we do fail, that there's forgiveness. And not let the enemy beat us up when we do fall. Because when we do fall, you better believe he's going to come in and he is going to torment you. He is going to attack you. He's going to tell you you're a failure, that you failed God, that you failed your family and your friends, that you failed everyone, and that you are no longer fit, that you're not a Christian anymore, that you've lost, you've fallen out of grace because you've fallen. But the thing is, get back up. Brush yourself off. Confess. Say, hey guys, listen, I'm sorry, but this is what happened. I need to tell you what happened and I need to, I need to, to let you all know that I need prayer to ask that, that God would help me not to do this again because I have anger issues or I, I have um, a short fuse, I have a bad temper or I have a spending problem or I have a pornography addiction or whatever the, whatever the problem is, confess it to your brothers and sisters. But again, be careful who you confess it to because everyone who says that they are a Christian 
is sometimes they're not a mature Christian. Maybe they're a babe in Christ. Maybe they're, um, they have an appearance of a Christian, but deep inside they're, they're rotten. They, their fruit is rotten. We have to be careful because not everybody who we confess to, who we talk to, who we share our deepest turmoils with is going to be for us. And you better believe the enemy is whispering in their ear, ready to accuse you and attack you. And sadly, there's so much gossip in the church and it needs to stop. This is why we have to have our eyes on Jesus and remember who we are and whose we are. We belong to Christ. We are his. And it doesn't matter what people think of us. It's what Jesus says about us. And we are loved. We are dearly beloved. And you have to remember that this world, it's going to fall away. It's, sadly, we see this great falling away now. And we see that so many people who were professing professing Christians are walking away from their faith because they were not rooted in it. They truly did not have, they were not rooted in the word. They were not rooted in Christ. They did not place their faith in him and him alone. They were relying on their works and they've fallen away because it's been too hard. It's, it's not easy. This, this, this walk with Christ is not easy, but I, I know without Jesus, I would not make it through this life. I would already be in my grave. I would probably be in a mental institute and no offense against anyone who has. I'm just being honest. I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown after my husband died. And so, I mean, I, I was, my parents had me on a watch because I told them that the enemy was attacking me and making me have thoughts of taking myself out. And so, I had to really confess to my parents how I was feeling so I could get prayer and that God could strengthen me and help me to make it through what I was going through because if I did not lean on him, I was not going to make it. Time is short. Time is so short. We have got to be on our guard and we've got to be about our father's business. You know, a lot of people are mocking and scoffing right now. And a lot of them are doing this because of the fact that we were saying that this eclipse was impending judgment. And people laughed and mocked and scoffed because they didn't see anything happen. We have got to keep our eyes on Jesus. And there's a lot that's happened. I mean, look at Israel. Israel is a powder keg. It has just exploded overnight. Exploded overnight. And any moment now, any second now, there could be a full blown out war. Today, for the first time, the word Armageddon was used to describe the the escalation, what's go the warfare, what's going on in Israel in the Middle East. It was called Armageddon. Well, we know what Armageddon is. It's that last battle where Jesus throws the Antichrist and the false priest into the lake of fire. So that's Armageddon, but they are calling this Armageddon. We are close to going home. Israel, the Temple Institute posted something about the red heifers again today, and we're talking about the red heifers, and I know there's a lot of people who say that they already sacrificed one of the red heifers. I don't know, but the way things are going, it's quite possible they could have. But I'm not going to stand here and say, yes, they did. It's very well possible they could have. But we are close. They are believing that this red heifer is going to usher in their, um, their Messiah, which we know is the Antichrist. And they are looking for him in the month of Nisan. We are in the month, the biblical month of Nisan now. There's a lot that is happening. And sadly, a lot of the reason why the mockers and scoffers are coming out in full force now is a lot of them call themselves Christians. The reason why they're mocking and scoffing is, is because, of course, they didn't see anything coming. But there's others that are laughing and scoffing because people were saying, 
this day on April 8th is the rapture date. Nobody can tell you when the rapture is coming. I might say, I pray it's on this day. I might say, but I will never, and if I have ever, ever, ever made anyone believe that I'm, that I believe that it's on a certain day, I apologize right now because that's never my, been my intent. I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. And I don't profess to know when the rapture is happening. And at the day I do that, I want you all to call me out. I want you to call me out. I never want to say the rapture is going to happen on such and such day because I don't know. I pray it soon. I believe it soon. But to say a date, no, I can't. I might get excited and I might talk about a date for a while. I know I was excited about April 8th because of this eclipse because I felt in my spirit and I still feel in my spirit that it was significant. Did I get a little hyped up? I probably did because I'm going to be honest, I want to go home. But if I have ever made any of you feel like I am professing a date or I have ever made you feel like I've given you false hope, I apologize right now for that and I repent from that and I ask God to help me not to do that anymore. And I'm sorry. That's never my intention. And I just felt like I needed to clear that and get that out of there because I never want you to think that I know a date because I don't. But I'm like you. I just want to go home. I want to be with Jesus. I want to be out of this evil and wicked world that gets worse by the day. I want to see my husband and my other loved ones who have gone on before me. I want to see you all and meet you all in person, face to face, just like I want to see Jesus face to face. I want to see you all. I want to fellowship with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, some of, most of you are closer to me than some of my family is, and that's sad. But it's because we share that bond, and that bond is Christ. You know, I know everyone is so tired. I know. Like I said, this week has been a battle, not just with all the accusations and the mocking and the scoffing and just other things that have, that have happened this week. But work has been... I say this all the time, but it's, it just seems to get worse. And I just keep praising God because it's like, God, I can't control any of this. I can't fix it. I, I, I can't, I don't have anything, I don't have another year to compare this with because it's never been this, this rough. There's been times when I have literally wanted to walk out and that's not me. But because of the stress and the frustration and just the constant behavior, I have been tempted just to grab my stuff and just walk out. But I know God has got me. And just as he has got me, he's got you. And he's going to get you through whatever you're going through. Whether it's grief from a loss of a loved one. Whether it's homelessness. Whether it's sickness, infirmities in your body. Whether it's financial issues, marriage issues, relationship issues with your children. Whatever the issue may be, he's going to get you through it. You know, it might not look the way you want it to. You know, but he'll get you through it. The way we have to pray is, Lord, your will be done. Your will be done. You know, Paul, he had a thorn in his side. It doesn't say what that thorn in his side was. But he asked three times for the Lord to remove this thorn from his side. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient. And it's going to see us through to the end. And I pray over every single one of you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray over you right now. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just praise you and I just lift up your mighty name, Lord. For there is no name that is 
like yours, Lord. There is no name that is higher than yours. God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you everything because, Jesus, you are worthy of it. You and you alone are worthy of our praise. We thank you that you died on the cross for our sins while we were still yet sinners. And we thank you, Lord, for just helping us to endure this time, this persecution, these attacks that we are going through, the, the mental and the physical stress, Lord, the financial stress, the marriage and relationship stress, Lord, we ask you just to help us to just maintain and make it through to the end because, Lord Jesus, we know you are coming soon to take us out of this evil world, Lord. But while we're waiting, Jesus, we ask you just to embody us with your strength, with your mercy and grace. Help us to give each other grace, Lord, when we do fall, when we do fail. Help us to lift each other up, Lord, and tell each other that it's okay okay that we're forgiven and that we need to keep going with you lord and not to look back and not to stop and not to to walk away lord because we are so close to going home lord i pray those that are aching in their body that have pains that they can barely endure lord i pray that you would touch their bodies lord minister to their bodies lord touch them and heal them lord to give them the peace in their minds that they need from the exhaustion of being in constant pain Lord, I pray for salvation upon loved ones that need it, Lord. Lord, we know that time is drawing to an end, and we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would minister and witness to our lost loved ones. Don't let us be afraid, Lord, to speak your name in front of them and spread the gospel and share it with them, Lord, and then lay them down at your feet, Jesus, and trust you with their salvation, Lord. We just ask you to help us not to pick up these burdens because, Lord, they are not our to carry. Jesus, I just ask you that you would just help whoever is going through these mental attacks, that they would know that, Lord, they are going to make it through this and that they are not too far gone and that they have been forgiven, Lord, and that when they do fall, that they know that, Lord, all they have to do is get up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I need your help. I don't want to do this, but Lord, I can't do that without you. I need your help. I need your strength. Lord, help us to remember that you are our constant companion and you have told us you would never leave us and you would never forsake us, Lord. And you sent your Holy Spirit, your comforter, Lord, to comfort us and guide us and direct us, Lord. And we ask you that we would walk in the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we'd have eyes and to see and hear the things that we need to see and hear, Lord. And we would use our discernment, Lord. Lord, I pray for those who are going through financial struggles right now, that you would help them to make it through this, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would stretch their money out beyond they could ever dare comprehend or dream, Lord, that you would help them pay their bills, Lord, pay their home mortgages, that you would help them put food on the table, Lord, if they are looking for a job, that you would bless them with a job that would meet their means, Lord, meet their needs. But we pray that, Lord, their children would not go hungry, that they would not go hungry, that they could have lights and water in their house, Lord, and food on the table. Lord, help us to be grateful for everything, even if it's not something we like to eat, that, Lord, let us come to you in Thanksgiving and say, Lord, we thank you for this food because, Lord, it's off. You've given it to us, and we, we praise you, and we thank you for this food, Lord. Lord, I just ask you that you would help us to have courage to stand up when we need to stand up. Lord, and help us to know when we need to sit down and just be quiet and stand still, Lord, and know that you fight our battles for us. Lord, we pray for those who mock and scoff. We pray that their eyes would be open, Jesus, and that they would see that, Lord, time is short, and they would repent, and they would turn from this mocking and scoffing, Lord, Lord, we just ask you that you would just bind the enemy's hand, Lord, and just give your people some rest. Lord, we're tired, but Lord, help us to keep on going with you, Lord, knowing that, God, you have got this and that you will not, you will not forsake us. You will not leave us, Lord. Help us to rest in you, Lord. Lord, help us to rest in you. Lord, I thank you once again for meeting the needs of my brothers and sisters and whatever will you have for them, Lord. Help us not to walk in what we see, but Lord, help us to walk by the Spirit. Help us to give each other grace and love and mercy, Lord. Jesus, you showed us grace and mercy when you died on the cross for us. 
while we were still yet sinners. Lord, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters. I thank you for just helping them, Lord, guiding them and directing them, Lord. Help us to draw ever closer to you, Jesus. We love you and we adore you and we cannot wait to see you, to look upon your nail-scarred hands, to look upon your nail-scarred feet, to see the piercing in your side, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for dying for all of our sins, that we are washed and cleansed in your blood. Thank you for saving us because we could not save ourselves. Lord, if there's anyone that's trying to work for their salvation, I pray that their eyes would be open and that they realize that, Lord, it's already been won. That you paid it all on the cross for them. All 100%, Lord. And that they would not walk around in fear thinking that if they don't work enough, they're going to go to hell but that they would want to serve you because they love you and they want to do your will because they, they love you. Jesus, we just ask you to guide us and help us to wait and endure while we wait on you, Lord. We're waiting for that trumpet to blast. And we pray that it's soon, Lord. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for uplifting our spirits. Holy Spirit, we ask you to minister to our spirits, to minister to our souls, to renew us, strengthen us. Help us to lay our burdens down, Lord, and not pick them up again. Jesus, we thank you, and we praise you, and we magnify your holy name. Amen. I love you guys so much. I really do. We're going to make it. We're going to get through this together, okay? Don't let the people who are mocking and scoffing get to you. Pray for them. If you don't know Jesus, now is the time to come. Jesus is coming very soon, and you don't want to be here for the last seven years that are coming upon this earth. It's gonna be hell on earth. And all you simply have to do is believe, just as 1 Corinthians 15, one through four says, that if we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day. If you believe in that, if you place your faith and believe that his blood covered all of your sins, and that you've been forgiven, and you've placed your faith in that, in him, in his blood, you're saved. Quit trying to work for it. Quit trying to earn it. You're not going to get brownie points with God. Works are good, but works won't save you. Works, works, we get rewards in heaven for the works that we do. That's what the Bema seat judgment's all about, is about rewards. I sh be must see. It's not really a judgment. We're not being judged, but we're being, we're being um, given our crowns. We're we're given those things that we have earned through our our work that we have done here on earth. We receive rewards for those works, but they won't save you because Jesus paid it all on the cross. It's like in Hebrews ten thirty six when. Um, the writer of Hebrews, I want to say Paul, but we don't know who wrote Hebrews. They were talking to um, the Jewish Christians who, who had come to Christ. And he was telling them, once you know about the blood atonement of Jesus Christ and that he paid all of your sins, if you go back out and you start sacrificing animals again, then that sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross, it's null and void to you. I'm paraphrasing that greatly. But remember, it's about Jesus and about what he did, not about what we can do, not about what we've done. 
We are not righteous. Our righteousness to God is as filthy rags. When God sees us, he sees his son's righteousness. He sees the blood covering us. Jesus was our blood atonement because there always had to be a blood atonement for the forgiveness of sins. But that sacrifice that they had to do in the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of the, of the sacrifice that Jesus would do on the cross and that would make all other sacrifices null and void. It's exactly why the temple veil was ripped from top to bottom. Top to bottom, think about that for a moment. A person couldn't have ripped it from top to bottom. That was God who ripped it top to bottom. And this was not some thin little veil material that you put over your face. This was a thick, I think they said at least six inches thick fabric. And it was ripped from top to bottom. Signifying that there was no more that not just the high priest could enter. Because Jesus is our high priest. Signifying that all could come into the holies of holies to fellowship with God one-on-one -on -one, and we no longer needed a priest to make sacrifices to sprinkle the blood offering in the holies of holies for us. We can walk boldly to the throne of God because we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and we have placed our faith and our trust in him and him alone. You know, guys, I don't, I don't pretend to be a preacher, a teacher, or a prophet or anything if I say something that doesn't sound right, please correct me, but please don't come accusing me of taking away from the Bible. Please don't say that I don't believe in something. I, that's a very, very strong accusation when you come at someone and accuse them of taking away from the Bible when it tells you in Revelations, do not take away from this book. I don't claim to be a preacher or a teacher. I don't claim to be a Bible scholar. I love the Lord. And I love you. And I love sharing the gospel with those who might be on this channel watching who don't know Jesus yet. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit pulls them and draws them in. And that they have conviction over the way they're living. And they, they want to be made clean. You know... When we come to Christ, we're not perfect. Even after salvation, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. We mess up. We fall. We slip. We sin. But we know we're forgiven. I go to the Lord and I say, Lord, I'm sorry. I did it again. I need your help not to do this. I can't do this on my own. And you better believe the Holy Spirit, he will convict you if you're not doing something right. If you're not living right, you're going to be miserable. You are going to be miserable. So if you've walked away, come back home. Time is short. Time is very short. And eternity is on the line. All right, I'm going to get off here. But I truly do love you all. I know I've said that probably a million times today in this, but I do. I care about you all. If I didn't, I wouldn't do this, believe me, because <laughs> it's not fun being attacked. It's not fun um, being accused of things that you haven't done. It's not, it's not fun. But I love you all, and this is what God's called me to do, and until he tells me to stop, I can't stop. You know, sometimes it's lonely. But I trust God, and I know that I know we're going to be home soon. So don't give up. Okay? Don't get tired. We're going home. I wish it were today, but you know what? The Lord's got his perfect timing. There is an appointed time, and when that appointed time comes, we're going. We're going. I know it's hard, you know, and a lot of people are saying, oh, well, don't, don't look for the rapture. Don't worry about the rapture. Just live your life. Once you're awake, you can't do that because you know Jesus is coming as soon and we're called to wait. We're called to look, called to watch. 
Don't let anyone steal your crown. You know, you get a crown for watching, for longing for his return. Don't let anyone steal your crown, okay? All right, but I love you all. God bless you all. And we are going to get through this together. If you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comments section. If you see someone who's asking for prayer, please put a thumbs up by their, if, by their prayer request if you have prayed for them. If you need to privately email me, please privately email me. My email is in the description box. I will get to you as soon as I can. I do work a full-time job, but as soon as I get off or it's on the weekend and I see it and I have time, I will happily email you. Please don't ever think that I'm ignoring you. There has been a couple of times when my mind has slipped and I've seen an email and at the time I couldn't reply and because I looked at it before, I forgot about it and I apologize for those who, have, who I have done that to. Um, it's never, ever, ever intentional. There's a lot going on, guys. A lot going on. But please know that I love you. Okay? I do. Alright. God bless you all. Keep looking up. Keep holding on. Keep trusting in Jesus because he's all we got. And he's going to see us through. But all right, guys, I love you all. I'm going to quit rambling. God bless you all. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.